I'm Lisa Peck from Lilo Interiors and I'm here today to talk to you about top interior design trends. Um, today you've been attending the uh, home improvement fair here. How many of you are thinking about doing a home improvement project in the next couple of years? Do you want to raise your hands? That's quite a few people. How many of you are thinking about remodeling a kitchen or updating a kitchen? All right. How about bathrooms? All right. Any other projects people want to tell me about that they're working on? Living room floors. Okay. Yeah? Remodeling your basement? Okay. Um, I asked my daughter this morning, she said gazebo. I had no idea she was thinking about putting a gazebo in the yard. Um, so what I'm going to talk about first is overall trends that are influencing interiors in our built environment um, kind of nationally, and they're kind of overarching trends. They're, they're things that are... Okay, sorry. <laughs> there are things that are influencing the built environment. And the thing that I want to emphasize to you is trends shouldn't be something that someone's imposing on you. You shouldn't think about them as being a style maker or a celebrity or a designer telling you um, what style or what trend you should adopt. You should look at the trends as responses to what are going on in <laughs> the current culture and what people are wanting for their lifestyles. Trends are responses to what consumers are wanting. And so as I go through them, I want you to think about which trend resonates with you, as opposed to thinking, oh, well, if that's the hip thing, then that's what I should do. <laughs> it really should be something that speaks to you. So one of the things I um, want to talk about first is that trends are not things that are faddish. They're not things that last for about a year. They're things that develop over decades and last for decades. If we think about wearable technology as a trend, does everybody remember in the 70s and 80s when everybody's dad had a Casio watch and it had a calculator on it? And wearable technology is still a trend today, but today it's Apple watches, it's garments that you know take your heart rate and things. So it's come a long way, but the trend of wearable technology is still around. So that's a good example if you think about it. Or stainless steel in kitchens. People first started using stainless steel and it's been around for a couple decades. Now it's on the wane, but it's still kind of a classic look. Some things that are influencing our, our in built environment today are interest in wellness and sustainability. And sustainability can mean things like green housing, housing, but it also, also can mean sustainable lifestyles. Having the time and the resources you want to do the things you want to do in your life. Escapism, um, I'm calling it the new cocooning. Um, people have very hectic lives. Anybody relate to that? Not enough time, kind of hectic. People can contact you 20 different ways, and so keeping communications open can be difficult. And so people want their homes to be a retreat. They want to feel like it's an escape from the kind of drumbeat of the world. Smart home. Everybody's seen Alexa, whether you have one in your own home or you've seen the commercials. Um, smart home technologies are starting to make their way into our homes, into our appliances, and this will keep increasing um, as the Internet of Things grows. The chaotic world, um, kind of globally, I think people feel like the world is changing quite quickly, the information age is changing things quite quickly, and so people are feeling like the world's a little chaotic. And I already mentioned time is perceived by most people as their most valuable commodity. We want more time to do the things we want to do in life and not necessarily the things we have to do in life. So <clears throat> the first slides you'll see will be mood boards that are indications of the trend, and then I'm going to show you some actual spaces. Um, the first trend I'm going to talk about is Serenity Now. This speaks directly to the fact that people are wanting simple, calm spaces to spend their time in. Um, if you think about the emphasis on wellness, that has a lot to do with peace and calm. Also, um, recently, some books that have been on the top seller list, like Spark Joy and the Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, 
have been indications of this trend. Do people here know those two books? Yeah, they're very much about minimalism and serenity. Um, and this is a direct response to the complex world and the lack of time. The aesthetics here are about clean lines, simplicity. The colors are light neutrals with shades of pastel and emphasizing texture over color. Has everybody seen all these blush colors that are everywhere, those pink blush colors? That fits into the serenity now overarching trend. This is another mood board and it is reflective of these very simple lines, texture, and it comes through fashion, through things in our home. We see it everywhere. This is a space that is really quite traditional, but it reflects the serenity now trend. It's very calm. The color palette is simple. It's light. Even the lines of the furniture are light. This was done by Elizabeth Scott Design. She's from Chicago. Here's a porch in Jennifer Aniston and a Justin Thoreau's, I guess, former house now. Um, <laughs> but this shows um, a very serene, the simple forms, the simple lines. It's very calm and serene. This is an example of this trend. And these were taken from Instagram. Um, the one on the left is a very contemporary um, version of this trend. So the soothing colors, the simple lines, but now in a contemporary setting. So that's another thing you should keep in mind as you think about trends. It doesn't dictate style. You could have a traditional home that reflects the trend or a contemporary home that reflects the trend or something in between. It's really about color and the emphasis of, of texture and simplicity in this case. Um, and I just thought the, the architectural skins tile was a material that particularly well fit this trend. It's very zen looking, it's very calm. The next trend I wanna talk about is one that I call Maker Nation. And I think our um, exhibit here in the gallery is a reflection of this trend. People are interested in locally made things. Um, if you think about the world, um, this is about growth in craft markets. Who here has been to a craft brewery? Anyone? Yeah, so <laughs> craft breweries are part of this trend, as are people's interest in Etsy, small batch textiles, handmade things. People are knitting more and crocheting more and doing macrame. All of that is part of this maker nation movement. Um, it's about authenticity. It's anti-fast fashion, anti-technology. They want things that feel authentic, leather, wrought iron, um, even, oh, I'm gonna go back to the color scheme. You can kind of see some beerish type colors in there, wrought iron colors, things that you would find in natural materials. Um, it's about reclaimed imperfection, letting imperfection exist, hand forged and made by hand. These are some spaces done by Lilu Interiors that have touches of this trend. So you can see that that fireplace is a hand-hewn fireplace of real stone. It's not a facade of stone. And the mantle is reclaimed wood. There's wrought iron in the other space along with reclaimed wood and um, very authentic handmade materials. This is Colleen Slack's space from next door. I really encourage you to walk through there if you hadn't, haven't had a chance. And this is kind of a modern take on the maker movement. All of the things in her space are made by hand by local artisans. Um, this is Sherry Vincent's space over there. And this is about reclaimed materials quite largely. And it takes advantage of the natural shape of wood, which is very authentic, authentic use of material. This one is by Martina, and we've got artisan-made rugs and furniture in that space. The next trend I'm going to talk about is what I call return to nostalgia. When people are feeling like life is hectic um, and maybe more complex than they like, guess what they want to do? Return to the past <laughs> when things were simpler, whether they really were or not. And the return to nostalgia is taking an interesting twist right now. It's not one era. It's about 
reminding yourself of an era that you found <laughs> comforting and pleasing. So we're seeing influences from the 40s, from the 50s, from the 20s, and even from the 1800s. Um, it involves a very jewel-toned palette, and it also involves classic patterns and materials and ornate detailing. So um, that doorknob is an example. You know, most homes you don't see that kind of really detailed doorknob, but we're seeing manufacturers make them again. This is a space from Jennifer Aniston and Justin Thoreau's home, and this is that mid-century modern look, but it is a nostalgic look. Remember when we were all watching Happy Days in the, what, 70s and 80s? This is that look, that modern, mid-century modern, or return to the 50s. Did they? They did, yeah. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, their house seems a little bit um, eclectic from room to room. Um, this is Brooke Shields' uh, sitting room, and this has the feeling of maybe grandma's parlor. It's got some modern touches, but real classic pieces of furniture, and you can kind of imagine your grandmother or maybe even your great grandmother might have had a room like this in her home. The next one is a mix of eras. You see 1940s, 1920s, the late 1800s in this room. And this is the home of Neil Patrick Harris and his husband. And it shows a sophisticated mix of eras, with, which also has a nostalgic feeling to it. These are some Instagram photos. And the reason I'm showing these is I wanted to show you, again, the return to nostalgia can look quite modern, or it can look very classic and traditional. And this is Jean Hoffman's space from next door. This space struck me as feeling nostalgic and at the same time contemporary. I thought it was a really fun addition to this category. Another thing that we're seeing is what we call urban vibrant. This is in general a very contemporary look. It's about the movement towards urban centers and the sustainable use of resources, including time. People are moving into urban centers because they don't want to spend time commuting. And so this aesthetic is really cool neutrals with pops of color like a cityscape. If you kind of imagine a city block with some signs or some plantings along the sidewalk, that's the kind of color range you're going to get. It's about very architectural feeling, very futuristic, and dimensional. This is a fireplace by Lilo Interiors, and you can see that dimensionality and the very clean lined architectural feeling to this. The cool color palette with pop of neutral is apparent in this photo. And this photo is about su sustainability. It shows the architectural feel of the building, but then reuse of older pieces of furniture are the sustainable part of this space. The next one I am going to call divine living. This is about people who are seeking experiences. How many of you have heard recently in the news that we should be focusing our energy on experiences and not on things? Yeah. So this is about either people seeking once in a lifetime experiences or having daily experiences that aren't mundane. Has anybody here seen the movie Joe versus the Volcano? <laughs> so it, at the beginning of the movie, his life is all about getting up, clocking in, working, leaving, <coughs> getting up, clocking in, working, leaving. It's very mundane existence. And people are wanting to break out of that. They're, it's about striving for something better in their life. And it's also about quality versus quantity. So this is, you know, buying a really quality piece of furniture and not turning things over every five years. Um, the aesthetics are light gem tones. It involves biomimicry, which is a fancy word for saying things that relate to nature. So patterns and materials that feel like they might be a leaf or that kind of thing. Um, and creating an emotional experience in a space so that it makes you feel joyful or it makes you feel moody, but an emotional experience of some sort. Um, it's about rich textures, it's slightly pared back, and you might see express joinery in tables and things. 
I thought Christine Frist's space from over in the gallery was an example of this. I walked in there and I immediately felt joy. It's just very happy. And it's also very experiential because it focuses on the art. You don't really think that much about the furniture. You think about the experience of the art and how happy it is. This is a space by my firm, Lilo Interiors, and it's moody, but then it's also focused on experiencing the art. Or it could be something as simple as having a boutique hotel kind of feeling in your bedroom at home, so that your bedroom at home is more of a, even more of a retreat because it feels like you're away at a, at a hotel. Joyful traces. So this is about people who are embracing technology to make life simpler. Um, I, I'm not one of them, <laughs> but there are people who have managed to leverage technology to make their lives less hectic. They don't run to the store, they have easy ways of communicating with people. Um, this is a trend that would appeal to them. It's about the internet of things. So, you know, they can call their house and say, turn the lights on, turn the lights off. Um, their children get greeted, you know their home, so they don't have to worry about them. It's technology making life simpler. <laughs> the other thing that you should keep in mind with this trend is that it wants to keep the technology kind of softened. And so you see decayed or time-worn kind of textures, and you see lots of neutral colors that are grounded in charcoal. This is, uh, on this mood board, you see examples of using technology to create fabric, digital printing. The chair is 3D printed. That chair was printed by a printer, which is kind of astounding. In some places, they're building houses with 3D printing. Um, and also transparency. The light fixtures are also done by 3D printers. This is an example of that trend where we have kind of a decayed wall covering and it's um, dark in color. And I had light examples and they disappeared on me, so I apologize for that. Another uh, overarching trend is world traveler. So for a few years now, people have been doing kind of these extreme trips. They're going on once in a lifetime experiences again, but it's about traveling to different cultures. This is about mixing cultures and it's a reaction against isolationism um, it's also about thinking that different cultures are mixed together. The aesthetics here are rich color, graphic pattern, and mixed influences. And it should look acquired and a little bit time-worn. This room is an example of that with European influence. If you look closely, you can see Great Britain, France, Italy, all of those places are represented in this room. It's kind of harkening back, it's a room that harkens back to the grand tours. This is Khloe Kardashian's living room, and it's very world-influenced. It looks Moroccan with touches of Europe, um, and it's personalized with her signature black, white, and gray color palette. This is the home of Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, where they've taken really one culture. It looks like you could be, I'm not exactly sure where, but somewhere exotic, <laughs> maybe Indonesia, in this space. Does anybody have any questions about those trends? I'm going to then move on to things that hopefully are more relevant to your specific projects that you're working on, which are kitchen and bath design trends. Um, and overall, we're seeing as trends in these spaces, mixed metals, bold color, dimensional design, easy to use surfaces, easy to clean surfaces, and customized storage. And those all tie back to the trends I just talked about. Mixed metals. If you haven't taken a look around, you can get faucets or light fixtures or many items in everything from shiny brass to rose gold to copper to oil rub bronze. And in today's interiors, we're mixing these metals together. <laughs> so um, doing that, if you've ever walked into somebody's house and they have all shiny brass, you probably know when they built that house. This is about mixing the metals to give a timeless look. We're seeing metal in coming back in cabinetry. Um, if you've ever been in a house with the metal cabinets, they used to be painted. Um, now we're seeing them actually express that they're metal. Many metals are being used in one space. So um, this, this uh, kitchen on the left 
uses brass and stainless right on the range together, and the whole room mixes brass and stainless. And then we're seeing textured metals being used a lot too, hammered sinks and woven metals in those drawers. Matte black has been around for a while in a metal finish, and that's very popular today. So think about freely using metals and not always matching them. <laughs> Bold colored appliances. These are making a big hit. Now, if yellow's always been your favorite color, buy a yellow range, it might be fun. If you're doing it because you think it's hip, don't do it. Um, <laughs> there's lots of ways to embrace the bold color without spending the money that you spend on a nice range. They're coming in all colors and they're coming both styled traditionally and contemporary. Um, and then there are kind of neutral colors in ranges like taupes and blacks. So if you like the idea of a colored range, but you don't want red or orange, you can get black, taupe, navy, something that has some legs. That's a color that everybody has always liked. I would call navy one of those colors. Or if you like this idea, but you don't want to invest in it in a big way, they're making faucets that are color. So it's a smaller investment, a way to give a little zip to your kitchen. I also thought this sink just came out at KBiz this year, and that front apron that is blue on this photo is interchangeable. So you can have it be blue today, green tomorrow, and stainless 10 years from now. <laughs> so you buy that sink once, and you can buy a new apron for it and change it. I thought it was a genius idea. Also, if you want a small way to do this, hardware. You can change out hardware very simply. It's a DIY thing, and they've got nice, colorful hardware. And a more permanent way of doing it is tile. We're seeing lots of big, bold statements with tile in kitchens and baths. And again, it's about personal expression. So we're seeing everything from those bright oranges and reds to soft blues and soft sage greens and taupes. We're even seeing pastel in kitchen cabinet colors, like that soft green. Particular hits right now are orange. And if you look, you can see this is both in a traditional kitchen and a contemporary kitchen. So just because you're painting your cabinets orange doesn't mean you have to be contemporary. Green cabinetry is also very big, this rich jewel-toned green, which we talked about jewel tones being popular in another trend. And then we're also seeing black and navy and gray as very popular. And I would say those colors are stable. And like I said, they're like a good suit, right? You have a navy suit, you've got a, a go-to. So navy cabinets, black cabinets, and gray cabinets are very safe choices if you want color that's not white. For years, we've been seeing white kitchens all over. And that color is making its way out of the kitchen and into the rest of the house. People are using it on built-ins and built-in furniture throughout their home. We're also seeing dimension. So um, I showed you a fireplace with a really dimensional tile. I think that's more successful maybe in a bathroom where you don't have spaghetti sauce um, <laughs> hitting the tile, but there are dimensional tiles available. I particularly like the one on the bottom where it's round and I can imagine I could clean that. Um, but they're very interesting tiles and you can use them just for just over the hood like that one does or in the whole space. And now, just this year at KBiz, we're seeing a lot more dimension and pattern on actual fixtures. So tubs have dimension, sinks, pattern, and, and dimension on all of these things. Kitchen islands in contemporary spaces are taking on extreme dimensions. So they're not kind of, you know, your standard box. They're kind of interesting shapes um, and very architectural. That's contemporary, and here it is in a traditional space. If you look kind of closely, the, the cabinets on either side of the sink there have dimension to them, but they're within a very traditional kitchen. So that's a way of adopting this, this into a traditional setting in kind of a smaller way. Most of the kitchen looks pretty conventional. Easy to clean surfaces. Um, people don't want to spend a lot of time on maintenance. They've got other things to do. They want to be able to wipe their counters and go. 
Um, and quartz is still our number one surface that we're going to. Um, granite is still number two. People haven't abandoned granite. <laughs> they're still using it because they like when they're in a trend that likes that natural material. What? It's just quartz. I see granite. The, the quartz is the slabs up on the right. All of those are quartz from Cambria. The lower. I believe that is actually a, a quartz as well from Cambria. And then people have been using marble a lot in their kitchens, but they have found that it's difficult to maintain. So if you take a look at the new lines of quartz from Cambria and others, they do have quartz that looks like marble. So you get the look without all the maintenance. <laughs> and I know my clients have been really enjoying those. Um, this is, again, an example of these materials being used in very traditional setting or a very contemporary one. And then personalized storage in these spaces has become more and more demanded. This pantry door on the left, I, if I was baking, I have to walk back to my pantry and pull all the things out. I would love this, <laughs> to just be able to scoop sugar and flour and whatever right there where I'm baking. Um, and getting things off the countertops is a big emphasis of having all this customized storage. So the one on the right, you've got the paper towels tucked in at the top, and then the trash and recycling below. And it's using every inch of your kitchen really well is really the trend. Keeping the counters clean and uncluttered so you've got a serene space to work in and everything's right where you need it so you can work efficiently. This kitchen was done by my firm and this is all about, again, point of use storage we call it, right where you need it. You pull out that tall pull out and your skillets are right there. You've got spices and oils and everything right at the range top where you're going to use them and it's easy to put everything back. Um, everything's also not in a base cabinet where you have to kind of get down to reach it. Uh, Pop-up mixers, recycling. This one is the dog food, which always lives in the kitchen and often doesn't have a home. Um, so we try, we're really trying with this trend to make sure that everything is put away. Your recycling isn't in a bag where you trip over it. The dog food is, is away, dog dishes. All of that has a place. And in bathrooms, we have the same thing, um, point of use storage. So people are creating places to tuck their curling iron, their hair dryer, more like a salon, where it's all sitting there for you to use it. You can put it away. And then when you walk back into the bathroom, you've got a nice, clean, simple space to start working in again. Hampers, those kinds of things, all tucked away in built-in cabinetry. And that takes us to questions and answers. So does anybody have specific questions about a project that they're working on that they want to ask me about a trend they've been thinking about? Or? Well, there really is no problem with marble. You do have to maintain it. And you have to reseal it. And things like wine and alcohol can etch it and stain it. And so for some people, they don't like the patina look. That's kind of a common American thing. We don't like patina. We want everything to look new and shiny all the time. What? It doesn't. No. Not in my experience. Yes. What about flooring? Oh, yeah. So again, I think people are liking authentic materials. Um, I didn't really cover flooring. People are using everything from wood to porcelain tile to natural materials. Um, porcelain tile is mimicking the look of porcelain or of natural materials just the way quartz is, but it's lower maintenance and same with luxury vinyl tile. Um, it's a good price point, it can mimic some really nice natural looks and it's easy to maintain. Yeah. I have a whole wall fireplace of brick yeah. and I would like to do something with it. Um, um, would painting it be white be a uh, mistake? Well, it depends on who you ask. I would say no. It, it, go ahead and paint it. If you like the look of painted brick, paint it. Well, I don't know if I like the look or not, but I just don't like what it is now. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a big mistake to paint brick. Colleen will join me on that. Oh, sure. 
Um, so she asked, I have a whole wall of brick on a fireplace. Is it a mistake to paint it? Well, some people would say you never cover wood or brick with paint. I'm not one of them. I would say if you like the look of painted brick, go ahead and paint it. The other thing you can do sometimes is um, put a tile or um, large scale uh, tile of stone or something over the face of the brick. A good tile setter can do that for you. It's like horribly expensive, isn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> sure, <laughs> nothing's cheap. Or you can use one of those porcelain tiles that mimics a natural look. And Where do you find something like that? Um, locally, there's lots of tile showrooms. Um, RBC, Ruble, Tile by Design, there's lots of options. Yeah. I've never heard of porcelain tiles. Well, I, I, you can, I, I'll send you a list if you want me to. How about carpet versus natural wood or laminate looking? Yeah, so I don't have any big beef with carpet other than indoor air quality. I have carpet in my bedroom. Um, the only argument against carpet would be if you have someone who's asthmatic or has allergies in your home because carpet does retain um, dust mites and things that are undesirable for those people. Um, but in our design and practice, we're using all of those things that you mentioned. We use natural wood whenever possible for budget, laminate sometimes when it's a budget thing, and we use carpet wall to wall, especially in bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the caustic tile. Oh, well, other than it's lovely, um, encaustic tile has been around for a while now, like 10 years or more we've been seeing encaustic tiles being used. I would say it's a really strong trend, and you are finding it in both traditional and contemporary patterns, um, and there are great options out there, and often you can custom color them. Well, the reason I ask is that I went to the tile store and they said that in caustic tile it's not uh, stained all the way through. So it's not. Where? Yeah, I would only use it on a vertical surface. I wouldn't use it on a floor. If you want pattern on a floor, I would use a cement tile. Yeah. Encaustic is like kitchen backsplash or a feature in a bathroom, a vertical feature. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, reglazing or tubs and painting existing tiles? Yeah. With, I think there's a new product out. Yeah. Um, so reglazing tubs, I've had clients successfully do, and they've been happy with the results. It's not something I often recommend, um, but it does work. Um, painting tile, I'm a little iffy on. I, I don't know anything about the product. It would be always my preference not to do that if possible because my sense as somebody who's been around doing this for 30 years is that it might not be long lasting. Yeah. What about painting trends? Painting trends? Yeah, and colors and also, you know, just be that you would paint everything sort of neutral, large spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that still is a very, very viable. Some of the trends that I talked about have a neutral palette as, and with pops of color. That's, that's a very easy thing to do. But we are seeing people use those rich colors, even jewel tones like indigo and that evergreen on walls, the bold colors that we saw in kitchens. Um, it's usually just one room. It's usually not their whole house or a wall in a space. But if you like color, do it, yeah. Yeah. You got one of those uh, shiny gold combs. <laughs> it's it's back in. <laughs> Good thing you didn't change it. Oh. The whole thing the rough bronze thing. Yeah. But now I'm hearing the mixed media thing, and I'm wondering if maybe we could get away with that. And we've only converted part of. Yeah, and so then I would recommend. So when we mix metals, we do it within rooms. So. I wouldn't recommend having part of your house be all shiny brass and part be oil rub bronze, but if you could figure out a way to, you know, maybe replace a light fixture or a lamp and get some of that oil rub bronze in those rooms that have the shiny brass to mix it. Well, what I was thinking is we have a bathroom where the, the faucet is going to be very hard just to change 
out. Um, and, and I'd like to keep it shiny gold, but it, it's really, you know. Uh, but maybe could I do part of it in, in oil yeah. rub bronze? Potentially, yeah. You just have to think about having those colors balanced in the space. Well, I wouldn't do that. It would be more like um, knobs versus poles, or you know what I mean? Like, hmm, maybe I'll talk to you later in more detail, because it, that's a, a dicey problem. Yeah. <laughs> but you can mix metals. That's the thing that you just have to figure out a way to do it well. Yeah. Stainless steel appliances have been around for a long time. Yeah. The, there's, there's something fresh. Steel. Yeah, they're still a classic, but like I said, there are. Question, oh, stainless steel appliances have been around for a while. If we want to do something besides stainless steel, what would you recommend? Um, the bold colors are really the new trend, and you'd be getting in on the beginning of it, which means it would probably last for decades. But if you're not comfortable with those bright colors, like I said, there are, I can't remember who it is, but somebody has taupe and like a stone gray but it's more of a matte finish. And I think those are very interesting. Do all the appliances in the kitchen in a color like that? Or? No, you could just do your range or just your refrigerator. Yeah, or it, and it would be fine if you're mixing it with stainless. Yeah. Yeah. What's your opinion of uh, luxury vinyl planking for flooring for trends? Do you think it'll yeah. So she's asking, what's my opinion of luxury vinyl planking for flooring? Um, I think it's very durable. Um, they use it a lot in commercial spaces, and it lasts a long time there. So you know, pets and children shouldn't be able to wear it out. Um, and I think it will be around for a long, a long while. It, it's been around for a while, but it's, they're increasing the number of patterns that are available. It will be a lasting thing. You won't be dating your house if you do it. <laughs> yeah. Track lighting out. Well, it depends on what kind of track lighting. So um, I have a client who has those big clunky lights right now from the 70s, and we're switching out. But it's just impractical, right, to hire an electrician to change all their lights over. So we're switching it out to a low voltage um, track the transformer is in the canopy, and the light fixtures are about this big. So it's a much more um, compact version of track, much more updated. Trends in canned lights? Trends in canned lights. Well, LED lighting is new, um, and definitely most people are doing LED now. Um, but other than that, I mean, they've gotten smaller, so that's good. Um, and as far as trends, <coughs> they've been pretty much the same kinds of things for a while, and I think they will continue to be. Um, people are, some people use a lot of can light in their home because they like really bright spaces, and some people use less. It's just really, that really is personal preference. Yes. Kitchen and bath showrooms, are there any that you would recommend oh. to kind of be able to see some of these new trends? Yeah, kitchen and bath showrooms. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with International Market Square, but the kitchen and bath showrooms there are open on Saturday. So anybody who wants can go down there and look through. Um, Partners for Design is there and North Star and oh, I'm going to forget people. Um, but there's lots of showrooms down there and I would highly recommend it. When I was a little kid, the guys from Partners for Design, I used, they were, used to be in the Galleria. I used to go in there and bug them and talk about the kitchens when I was like 12 years old and they <laughs> indulged me and they're really nice people. <laughs> they, they're part of the reason I'm a designer because they would listen to me chatter on about the kitchens. <laughs> yes. I like repurposing the furniture that I already have. Yeah. Some space, I like the lines. Um, and in this instance, I'm dining room table that I need to have re lacquered and updated the color, but I don't know how to find a company or a craft person that does lacquer. Okay, well, I can give you a couple tips. Um, 
So she's asking about refinishing, relacquering a dining table that she likes a lot. And when you say lacquer, is it actually painted lacquer? It, okay, I'm using that term loosely. Okay. It's uh, a painted surface that probably has a polyethylene. Oh. Hmm. It's shiny. Yeah. I have had lacquer touched up recently, and Ackermans did that, and they and they work directly with the public. I'm sure there's tons of resources. I just know Ackermans did a really good job on the lacquer that I needed touched up. Yes. Oh. Um, anything new in interior trim and doors? Hmm. Not really. <laughs> um, people are continuing to prefer, if they live in a reasonable mid-size to larger home, taller baseboards, a little bit of detail. But within those trends that I was talking about, so the ones that want to be more ornate would have more ornate trim. The ones that want to be simple might have plain stock. So it really goes along with the architecture of your home and the style of interior that you want. Oh, we do that all the time, yes. Um, so um, just like in kitchens, you're seeing a mix of materials. Sometimes you're seeing a painted island and then wood cabinetry on the perimeter. We are seeing people paint their base and case and leave the doors stained. Is that, yeah, that is a trend and it's an extremely nice way to mix warm woods for people who think wood should never be painted and the painted look for somebody who likes that, yeah. Yes. You were talking about the bright colors in appliances and the kitchens. Yeah. Uh, is it only the high end, like wolf, or is it all across the board? And um, I don't think you're seeing it with GE, but you're seeing those taupes and grays in the more accessible price point. What, what was the question? Oh, where are we seeing? Is Are you only seeing those bright colored appliances in the high end? And the answer is yes, the really bright colors you're only seeing in the high end. But at the more accessible price point, you are seeing neutral colors, taupes, blacks, those kinds of things. Yes? Group area bathroom and the ceiling, and the entire place is popcorn too. Yeah. Do you think some match that, or do you guys keeping popcorn, or are you moving more toward a knockdown or a um, most, most homeowners today that I am working with, oh, Pop, sorry, popcorn ceilings versus flat or knockdown. Most homeowners that we're working with today prefer knockdown or flat ceilings. And if you have no intention of ever changing the rest of the ceilings in your house, I would say go with popcorn. But if you think that you're gonna slowly make your way through the house changing that texture, go with knockdown or flat. What do you mean by knockdown? Knockdown is they use um, a sprayer and they still spray texture, but they trowel it, so it's relatively fat, flat, but it has a little bit of texture to it. It's, but it's not like the popcorn. Does everybody remember cobwebs and how they stick to that? Yeah. <laughs> That's, I think, a large reason why people don't want it is its maintenance. Yeah. All right. It looks like I have time for one or two more questions. Yes. Um, do you have recommendations for Okay, she asked, do I have recommendations for replacing cabinets in a very small galley kitchen? Um, so first of all, the more of that customized sort storage you can fit into your small galley kitchen, the better. Um, the kitchen that I showed you was really, oh, this one, it's pretty much a galley kitchen. It's maybe a little wider. Um, so the options for replacing the cabinets are everything from Ikea or Home Depot cabinets to custom. Um, and a lot of the lines they carry at the big box stores you can semi-customize and you can get some of this um, built-in storage. They have it. So depending on your price point, it's very doable. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you for attending.